Some states still allow that, and they call it a non-agent. So those are the people that are involved in this whole thing. Now, we haven't got to yet these fiduciary obligations, which we're going to talk about. A fiduciary obligation is an obligation that an agent carries to the burden of to make sure that he does what is best for the client. And a lot of times, what is best may be in conflict with what is best for the agent. But that is not what we are supposed to worry about. We are supposed to take care of our client and do what is best for them. And we are going to discuss those fiduciary obligations right now. So under your fiduciary obligations under the common law, you owe these duties to them. All right. You owe the duty. You must give advice and counsel or help your client. You will be entrusted with confidential information that you must keep confidential, like maybe the motivation on why they're selling. You know, hey, we filed bankruptcy. My wife and I are getting divorced. I got a job transfer. All of that confidential information, you have to keep confidential. Obviously, I would hope this one goes without saying. They must be consensual. Both parties must voluntarily enter into this. You cannot force someone to use you to sell their house, all right? And you owe other duties towards them that we are going to be talking about. And they will owe duties to you, like telling you all of the defects in the properties. Another duty they would owe would be paying the compensation that they have agreed on as the listing commission. So those would be some of the duties they lied to you. Um, now let's talk about the creation of this agency, the creation. Now, there are two types of agency that can be created. The first type of agency is called express agency. Express agency means that both parties know and understand and have agreed to the terms of the agency. They have expressly agreed to them. I will list your house. You will be honest with me and give me access to show it. And you will pay me 4%. That is an express agency. Now, express agencies in general can be oral or can be in writing. In real estate, I want you to write this down. I don't see it in the notes here, so let's write this down. There is a thing called the statute of frauds. The statute of frauds. The statute of frauds is a law that says some contracts are so important that they must be in writing to be defended in a court of law. All right. Real estate works under the statute of frauds. There is no such thing in real estate as an oral agency, oral purchase agreements, oral listing contracts, oral deeds. They must all be in writing. That is a key concept to understand. Under the statute of frauds, all of the real estate contracts we deal with are going to be in writing. That will give us express agency. All right. Now, there is a second type of agency, and I want you to understand that this second type of agency is still agency. It is just a bad one, all right? And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. It is called implied agency. 
implied agency is born out of the actions that are involved that would normally be considered relative actions for that agency. Okay? So, if a buyer calls you and says, hey, Raymond, I want to go see a house, I should have that buyer sign a buyer's agency agreement, which would make it an express agency. Both parties know, both parties understand, it's in the writing, all right? However, the person that asked me is a friend of mine, and I know them, so they want to go see a house, so I say, sure, I'll go show you the house. So I call and get the door code. I take the buyer to show them the house. I have created implied agency because the actions that I'm doing are actions consistent with real estate agency. I just didn't get them to sign an express form. So I've created that through an implied agency. And I could have done it intentionally or inadvertently or anything like that. It's still considered agency. I still owe them all the obligations. Even though we didn't write it down and we did not expressly state it, my actions revealed that I have working like an agent. So therefore, agency is implied and that is still agency. You must be careful not to create implied agency. One of the bad things with implied agency, which we haven't got to yet, is this unintentional of, uh, creation of what we call dual agency, where you end up working for both parties. We're going to touch on it in just a second. So you do not want to create implied agency. What happens is it is often created by new people in the business and it's not your fault. You just get excited. So a person calls on the phone and they go, Hey, uh, I saw the house for sale. Have you guys got it listed? And you say, yeah, it's listed. And they go, well, how much is it? And you say it's $400,000. Now, so far, you have not created agency because you have not told them anything that they couldn't have found out somewhere else. They could have called me. They could have looked in the ad. They could have looked on Zillow. They could have called 13 other agents and found that price out. So it's common knowledge. That is not creating agency. I haven't helped them yet. All right. And they say, oh, is it four bedroom? And you say, yes, it's four bedroom. I still haven't created agency because it is still knowledge they could find anywhere else. And then that guy on the phone says, wow, 400,000, I think that's kind of high. Do you think he has any wiggle room in the price? And you say, yes, he told me he was motivated to tell the buyers that. Ding, 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 ding. Now you have created implied agency because you have given them advice or assistance or help that they may not have been able to find anywhere else but you. But you didn't explain agency. You didn't get them to sign a document. You just told them something that was of agency definition and you've created implied agency and that guy goes okay i'll call you back and he hangs up and he turns to his wife and goes hey man i just got off the phone with my real estate agent and said that guy was motivated wait a minute no one said that he just assumed or may have assumed that you were going to help him but you did you created implied agency so the takeaway i want you to get is express agency good, implied agency bad, but it's still agency. Both of them, you still owe all of the fiduciary obligations. And that could get you in trouble 
through an implied agency when you just thought you were telling him he was the seller was motivated and he thought you were helping him in this deal. So be careful with creating implied agency. All right. Now, we've talked about compensation before and the commission that is charged. But what I want you to understand is that compensation does not create the agency. The fact you are getting paid to do this does not mean that's the defining factor in agency. You actually can work for free if you choose to. It is called a gratuitous agency. Now, when I say you can choose to work for free, understand that that is the managing broker has chosen to work for free. All right? Because it's my listing. You're just representing me. So if I say, yeah, we'll help your mother out and we'll list the property for free, we can do that. That does not allow us or give us an excuse to not represent them fully. The best example I can give you is, have you ever heard of attorneys doing pro bono work where an attorney would work for free? And a lot of times, a lot of attorneys will do that uh, as a uh, commitment to the community. They may help homeless people with legal issues or people that have you know, reduced income uh, financial issues, and they'll say, hey, I'll work for you for free as a pro bono charity kind of thing. When they agree to do that, they cannot stand in front of a judge and go, well, your honor, she wasn't really paying me, so I wasn't really a full attorney. I only did half the work because I wasn't getting paid. That is wrong. You can't do that. Same thing with us. We cannot say, well, the client wasn't paying us because we were just doing them a favor. So therefore, we only did half of our obligations. No. Either you're in or you're out. The fact you're getting paid has nothing to do with you being all in or all out. You could tell that person, no, I'm not going to be your agent because I charge and I'm not going to do it for free. That's fine. You owe them no obligation. But the second you said, I'm in, you owe them all of the fiduciary obligations, whether they pay you or not. Compensation does not create agency. All right. The fiduciary responsibilities. We've been jumping around this all the time. So now let's finally get into it. Okay. So, excuse me. <coughs> Can't breathe coffee, I guess. So, under the common law of agency, there are six fiduciary responsibilities that the real estate agency has defined as being required to create real estate agency. And this is where the difference would lie. I am sure that Peyton Manning's sports agency has more than six that were required. I don't know, because I've never been a sports agent. But for the common law of agency in real estate, there are six duties. And I've told you that this book loves their acronyms. These six duties spell out cold, A-C. All right, cold, C-O-L-D, A-C. And here they are. Your first duty is care. You must exercise reasonable skill and care to make sure your client does not get harmed or is a victim of negligence, all right? That could be things like, maybe you listed the property too low because you didn't do the uh, CMA correctly, the comparative market analysis. Maybe you didn't check the zoning to make sure your commercial client can actually use that building in the manner they went, uh, wanted to. That would be care. You owe them this obligation. 